everyone. So, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between, we have officially reached 1,000 subscribers. And I literally, it was like Friday, I woke up to that. And it was a pretty pleasant sight, to say the least. So, thank you to everyone for that. And to celebrate that, as I have said in the community post that I have posted, I will be doing a Q&A next week, which means you can put your questions somewhere in the comments and I will answer them. I have some idea of what the questions will be, but never mind. So today, as a kind of 1000 South special, we will take a trip back down memory lane, not related to the videos, but back to my personal mathematical life. And we'll solve a problem that pretty much got me, got me into mathematics, that pretty much made me learn stuff like trigonometry and algebra, and then much later on, calculus. And here's the problem. Suppose we have an isosceles triangle like this. And, hold on, I'm going to erase this because I'm a professional perfectionist. There we go. And suppose we draw a parallel line to, to the base. Well, the base can be like, well, it doesn't matter why it is the base it can be either one of the sides, but well, we'll say it's this one, such that the two areas, which I'll color in red, the two areas, which, div which are divided by the line, or in other words, the trapezium, the trapezoid, and the smaller isosceles triangle obtained by the line have equal area. And what we want to know is how far above the base is that line. But today we will not solve for the case of isosceles triangles because as I have found out while solving the problem later on, that it not only holds for isosceles triangles but for any general triangles. So let us solve it for that case today. So again we have, this is not how I was in, intending to draw it, this was more how I was intending to draw it, okay like this, and then as before our parallel line, and these two areas are equal. And as before, we want to know how far from the base, well, this, uh, the corresponding side is the line. Or it can be from the opposite vertex, depending on which is nicer. So let's, uh, so let's see how we are going to solve this problem. First, we will drop a height from the opposite vertex down to the base and label this as B1 and B2 for base 1 and base 2. And then we'll call this distance that we want to find h, and we'll call the height of the whole triangle capital H, which means that this right here will be, this is the first time I'm denoting things using arrows for some reason, capital H minus lowercase h. And we'll call, also call this length x and this length y. Because, the, because of the parallel line and the two triangles that we have right there. And now we have two pairs of similar triangles. We have this one and this one, and we have this one and this one, because it's pretty easy to see that, well, first of all, they are both right triangles, and for this first pair, they, they share this angle alpha, for this second pair, they share the angle beta, and hence, by angle, 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 they are similar. So we have two pairs of similar triangles in which we can compare the tangent of alpha and the tangent of beta respectively. So let's focus on the tangent of alpha first. So in the larger triangle, we have that this is equal to B1 over H. And in the small triangle, we have that this is equal to X over H minus H, which is not zero. And then we can just multiply both sides by h minus h to get that x is nothing but b1 times h minus h all over h. And then we can do the same thing for the tangent of beta to get b2 over h 
is nothing but y, not x, y over h minus h. And then again, we can multiply both sides by h minus h to get that y will be equal to b2 times h minus h all over h. Good. And now, here's how we're going to proceed next. We know that the area of this trapezoid, I'll do this in red, and the area of this trapezoid and the area of this triangle are equal by definition, which means each of them is equal to half of the area of the total triangle. And remember that the area of a triangle is defined, well, it's not defined, you can easily derive it, as one half times the base times the height. One of the many formulas we were made to memorize in middle school or here at secondary school in Canada. So we get, okay, so the area of our small isosceles triangle will be x plus y times base times the height, h minus h all over 2 is equal to 1 half times, I write it as all over 4 because 1 half times 1 half, and we have b1 plus b2 times h, times the whole h, sorry, this is the whole h, and h all over 4. But then, our x plus y, I will do this in blue, our x plus y can be expressed as, well, if we factor out the h minus h over h, we get b1 plus b2. And hence, we can substitute that in. So we get that this is equal to, okay, so we get b1 plus b2 times, we have an 2h minus h, so h minus h squared all over 2 times our height h and then b1 plus b2 cancels out on both sides and we can multiply both sides by 4h to get that here we get h squared should be equal to 2 times h minus h whole thing squared is that right? Hold on, let me see. Multiply by, by 4h. Yeah, that should be about right. And then we can just take the positive square root on both sides because we're in Euclidean geometry and in Euclidean geometry, lengths are positive, as far as I know. So we get h is equal to square root of 2, capital H, minus square root of 2, little h. And now we can easily solve for our little h that we desire. So we get, well, well, we just shuffle things around. So we get h is equal to square root of 2h minus h all over the square root of 2, which is equal to h times the little pressure minus the denominator. So we get 2 minus the square root of 2 all over 2. Yeah. And we can also rewrite this as h minus h, well, h over the square root of 2, because it's going to be nicer that way, h over the square root of 2. And then we can, we can solve for h minus h to get that this is equal to h over the square root of 2. And I just realized we could have divided by 2 on both sides and found that out much easier, much easier. but never mind, we have already found it that way. So we can see that the distance from the top will be h over the square root of 2, distance from the bottom will be square root of 2 minus 1 times h all over 2. And as I said earlier, the interesting thing that is that it holds not just for isosceles triangle, as was the original intent of the problem, but for all, well, for any general triangle, be it like as as weird as it can be. And yes, this is a very important problem in my mathematical career because I asked someone in my family who was a computer science student 
to solve this problem, and he did it using trigonometric ratios, and that really introduced me to trigonometry and later on algebra. So I am really grateful that I even thought to ponder this question in the first place. So this is a little thing about what you is for watching that you never get access to this video. Bye. And thank you so much for 1,000 subscribers.